Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this uh, series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be doing a Christmas haul. This is this is all the stuff I got over Christmas, uh, or that came for Christmas. Really, really happy with this stuff. Um, it's totally varied in in, in uh, <laughs> what it is, so it's going to be a bit of a quicker video as I just kind of go through. Uh, I might do more in-depth videos on each of these. I actually have done in-depth videos on a couple of these already, but uh, these are print versions, and I, I did them in PDF. So uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I'll take it a bit at a time just to give you a sense of what is uh, happening here. First one are these three books that I picked up myself just before Christmas. Um, now these two are Old School Essentials Adventures. Uh, the Hole in the Oak, which I haven't reviewed before, and Holy Mountain Shaker, which I have. Um, I had this I had this one in PDF. I have both of these in PDF. And I, I you know, I can't praise this one enough. I, I like this book quite a lot. Um, I love this map. I've talked about it before. The art in this book, uh, Luca Reitz, and uh, the adventure design is awesome. You should go watch the video where I where I cover it. Um, but I like having it in print. I'm much more likely to run a, a book that I have in print. I mean, much more likely to run an adventure or, a, or an RPG that I have in print than I am if I just have it in PDF. So I'm glad I got this because now I'm actually fairly likely to use it. Um, this one I haven't reviewed, but there are good reviews on uh, YouTube already about it, so I don't think I will. I haven't played through this adventure, but I found it uh, for pretty cheap at my local, uh, friendly local, you know, game store. <laughs> and it's great. Uh, I love how this one is laid out. Great maps on the front cover here. And funny art throughout these evil babies. Um, this one is definitely a Gavin Norman adventure. And uh, the art shows it. The layout shows it. Very clearly laid out. Uh, just fun, wacky stuff happening in this rather small dungeon. But I like it a lot, so I'm glad I got this one. And this one was something that I picked up kind of on a whim, because I'd, I'd never heard anything about it. The Hybrid Bone Effigy Crucible of the Urgent Chimera. It's really, really odd. It's a small little splat book. Um, it's for old school essentials, and it's a dungeon, but it's laid out in a really interesting manner. First of all, the art is really good, but you'll see that this it's really like a, I don't know, it's, it's almost more of like, it reminds me of Knock, right? Or those books like that, where things are not necessarily laid out to be clear, but rather are laid out to be visually interesting. Um, but that being said, it's actually fairly clear to read. I didn't have that much trouble with it because, uh, well, yes, like something like these elevation map, I don't tend to like gray, uh, scale gradient elevation maps. They tend not to be terribly helpful to me. Maybe it's just the way my eye works, but while, you know, a few things like that are kind of annoying, <laughs> the rest of it is great. And the actual adventures, it seems pretty cool. Um, Again, I haven't run this. Uh, the Tomb of the Space Horseshoe Crab Scientist Hero. Like, it honestly sounds like some of these names and titles were like, run through a generator, and then the adventure was developed around it. It's certainly possible. But regardless, uh, I think it's a good one. There's a lot of really cool magic items in here, and, and this could change a campaign. It also seems pretty deadly, because um, it's, I think, pretty low level, but you're running against a Chimera and his... Uh, kind of enslaved, or it's in, they're enslaved. Is, is a Chimera three things or one thing? I don't know. Regardless, uh, in this, I think it's presented as three things with one, like three minds, which is kind of interesting. But it's trying to create new Chimeras, essentially. And so you're going in there to try to stop it. It's stealing magic items, and so that's a really good reason for you to go into this dungeon, because there's a lot of magic items there. Uh, because it is trying to gather them. So, fun little adventure. I don't know. I'll probably run it at some point, but it just it caught my eye, and I think that was the point of it. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll give a more in-depth review of it if I run it at some point, but I'm glad I got this. All right. Now, the other thing that came over Christmas was the Shadow Dark set in, in print copy. These are the... Um, this is what I, I kick-started, so I got quite a lot of stuff here, actually. Um, and it's 
you know, it's fairly large what came in the box. So first we'll look at the book itself. Now I've already done again my deep dive into this, so I'm mostly just gonna talk about this actual construction here. It's nice, uh, kind of leatherette cover, um, not really, not real leather. Uh, basilisk skin, as it says, I think. Maybe not, <laughs> somewhere. But uh, that's what I think MCDM said about theirs. But it's embossed, and I, I really like the way that it catches the light there. And it's got a nice little thing here. Um, you can see that the, uh, oops, flip the other way. Uh, the spine is not totally flush, and so, but that's fine. What I've noticed is that it's really stiff. The book wants to close, and I feel like if I push it open to the point, uh, I'm gonna break something. So that's one th one minor issue with the construction is that it doesn't want to lie flat, which makes sense with a kind of book like this, and it doesn't really want to stay open. Um, so you kind of have to press it and force it, and I think that's going to, you know, you can see the way it's bending up at the spine there. Like that might cause some damage relatively quickly in in the long term, in the in the relatively short term. But I think that's, you know, what can you do? Um, the book itself is great. And as I've said before, the content in this book is just insanely good. It's not hyperlinked, obviously. <laughs> can't, can't click the button. Uh, but otherwise, this book is just phenomenal, and I highly recommend it if you can get it in print when it comes out, uh, when it's available for everybody to buy, if you don't already have it. Shadow Dark. <laughs> so this is definitely going to be a book I'll, I'll keep with me at the table, even if I'm not running this book or running this game because of the tables here. It's so good. Um, this book helps you prepare to improvise, um, which is, I think, the best way of doing it, right? You, if you're gonna run a kind of a more improv style game, which I do, you have to prepare to, to improv. You can't just, well, at least I can't just do it off the cuff. So books like this really help me do it. So anyway, that's the, the main book that came. And then it, the, the extra Kickstarter materials as well. So this is the screen. It's a really small, kind of compact screen, but I like it a lot. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is that this is not like AI art, but a lot of AI art can, like ends up looking like this. And I wonder why. Uh, just like the kind of sketchy blending of different things together, the weird faces that sort of appear. I don't know. It just reminds me of AI art. Not that it's bad. It's actually quite good. And I, I really like this. It's certainly not AI art. Or at least if it is, it's been retouched up afterwards. But it's just it's just an interesting piece. Um, but again, it's got the the uh, inside material is all solid stuff. What you would need to run the game, names, uh, NPC generation, random encounter stuff, and treasure. And again, this thing is tiny. I mean, <laughs> it's really small. But I, I like that. It's compact. You could you could pack this with you and have a screen with you on the fly if you were traveling to a convention or to someone's house or something like that. would be really easy to pack. So, good screen. Solid. And it's actually kind of heavy. So it's... <laughs> I don't know. I can't show you guys that too much. But it's it's solid. It'll last. Then a, a lot of extra materials and stuff. These are loose uh, pa pages. I haven't uh, opened them up, all of them yet. These ones are pre-made characters. Level 1 characters and I think level 0 characters as well. And on the back of each of them is a, page, a piece of art for that character, which is really cool. Um, so again, there's a bunch of them in here. You can see there's a whole stack of them, a bunch of individual pages. And here you can also see a, a Shattered Dark character sheet. It's very simple. I like simplicity when it comes to character sheets. So you can see everything very quickly. So I like these. Glad that they came. And then these are a bunch of extra monsters and types of monsters. So these are ooze cubes, different kinds of gelatinous cubes, basically. Uh, these are the three on the front page. You got heal cubes, magnetic cubes, necrotic cubes. But then there's a bunch more extra monsters in here. And then a pack of adventures. Now, I've reviewed these before, uh, but these are the uh, Arcane Library adventures. They're just two pages, basically front and back cover is all you need. And there's uh, a bunch of them in here. So you've got a whole bunch of pre-made adventures that come along. So very, very happy with this as well. And then finally, you've got the Cursed Scroll zines. These are, again, I've reviewed these in detail, but I'm like having them in print. It's nice to have at least the first three. I know that um, they're going to, I think, release more over at the Arcane Library. But for now, there's three of them, and uh, having them in print means they're much more easily able to be referenced. Oops, excuse me. Um, much more easily able to be referenced at the table. Uh, and uh, I can, again, much more likely to actually use them 
if they're if they're actually here at the table. All right, so awesome, great. These things work very well. Now a few other things that came that I haven't really looked at uh, before, and the first of these is mazes. Now there are some good reviews on this. I think Professor Dungeon Master has a really good one out there already. So I, again, I don't think I'm going to do a, a really in-depth review on this one unless you know, I want it. But it's such an interesting system. It's such an interesting system. First of all, the art is flavorful throughout. It draws you into this sort of style that it's going for here. Um, and the way that the dice work, where you pick a roll, and that's the way that you're, you always roll that die. Whichever, whichever roll you're associated with. So if you pick the Paragon, you roll the D4 for everything. For every kit check you do in the game. For your blades checks, your bones checks, um, your books checks, your boots checks, which are the four kinds of checks that you make, and either, either active checks or saves in each of those categories. Um, you always roll your D4. I think that's really interesting. So, you know, there are the, the rules specify how it works. It's not just like you're trying to roll high, you're trying to roll specific numbers. And so obviously, uh, if you're trying to roll a four, five, or six, then it's better to have a D6 and to be the, the D6 class, which is the Vanguard. But if you're trying to roll a two, three, or four, then it's better to be the Paragon, because then you can get, or I guess three or four. Uh, then you can roll that 50% of the time. Whereas if you pick the Sentinel or the D10, you're not likely to roll the three or the four, or you're less likely to roll the three and the four. But you are very likely to roll the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever that is required for <laughs> the uh, the uh, upper end of, of some of these abilities. So, really interesting mechanic there. I, I I always approve of systems that try something new, right? We've seen the standard D twenty roll over or under, you know, a dozen and a half times already. So something that's new, something that's like, hey, we're going to play a different kind of game. Uh, that's cool. And then there's this system of of light, essentially sort of light. It's how, how dark things are. And when things aren't dark, then you're more likely to succeed at certain things. So when things, and it's not, I don't, it doesn't refer to like actual the darkness around your character. It refers to the sort of pool of darkness that you have and it grows or decreases. And when things become more and more bleak, you start to fail at things that you otherwise would have succeeded on. Uh, another interesting mechanic here. You get aspects to your characters and edges to your characters. But, you know, this book is just one of those things I wanted to grab because, I don't know, I think it's interesting. It's a neat addition to the hobby. It tries something new. The art is good. There's some good random tables in it. I, am I going to play this a ton? Probably not. But I could see this catching on the table. Especially if you wanted something... Like, I don't know, something about this just seems like it could easily catch on... Uh, in, uh, with at least maybe my players. I could see them finding that base mechanic really interesting, really fun. Uh, and then again, the art in here is really good. I think it's, it reminds me of uh, Runehammer, Runehammer style, if you have ICRPG or something like that. It's more sketchy than that, but uh, it's still, still really good. Okay, well, again, I, I, I'm happy I got this. I haven't finished reading it in detail uh, either. I just got this, really. But I like the presentation. You hear that matte um, kind of uh, textured cover. Uh, this, this actually is a little annoying to me, this little bit of plastic here. It comes off the back, but then it's um, attached to the front, so you can't really take it off. And I guess I could use it as a second bookmark, and you, know, you can kind of like mark your page by like doing something like that, right? Um, and that's cool, I guess, but it just kind of flops around and it's a little annoying to me. Um, but oh well, I think it's still fine. There are two bookmarks as well. And, then, and the construction of this book is really, really excellent. Um, it's got that stitch binding at the top. Um, so it lies flat, and although it does kind of pop open, uh, but it does lie flat, so you can kind of push it down and, and read it fairly easily, which I like quite a bit. So, Mazes. Very interesting RPG here. Uh, I recommend you check out uh, Professor, Dungeon Master, Professor Dungeon Master's review excuse me, on this one, just to get a sense of what it's like, because it's a, it's a, it seems like a cool system.
All right, uh, I got two more things that I want to cover here. First of all, I got the Bron Colonia, which uh, Bron Colonia uh, setting for fifth edition. Now I'm moving away from fifth edition, and uh, and I'm not probably going to play in this setting, but I'm glad that I have it because it is really interesting. It's sort of set in a what well, they call it a, a uh, spaghetti fantasy. <laughs> it's like uh, a take on the Italian folktale comedy action adventure all the way going back until, you know, like the, the Middle Ages with these very, very larger than life kind of characters. Um, a lot of our, you know, a lot of uh, like, say, for example, Shakespeare, a lot of his types of characters come from the Italian uh, play scene where there were these very over the top ridiculous characters in some cases and and I think that blends into a lot of the more medieval and post medieval um, storytelling that comes out of Italy and then into the <laughs> I guess this is sort of taking that uh, and, and blending up to sort of the modern view of uh, modern you know 60s and 70s Italian movies or a lot of them and uh, this is this obviously the screen that comes with the setting the setting itself is interesting the mechanics are all 5th edition D&D uh, 5e it says a 5e up here. And because I'm less interested in 5e these days, I have to say that when I read through these books, I was a bit disappointed because it's just fifth edition, right? And so like a lot of the stuff that it's doing is it says, okay, we're going to cap out at, you know, like, I think it's like sixth level. You're going to cap out at sixth level and you're not ever going to get past sixth level. And we're going to get rid of this and we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to use these uh, new races or ancestries instead of those. And we're going to do all these... Um, Specific things to make this work, which I mean, you kind of have to do with fifth edition, right? You have to, but it it, it essentially, I, the question I could ask myself was, man, why make this for fifth edition? And then, of course, the root, the, the answer was because it, it's the most popular game and it's the one that'll sell the most copies. So in that sense, I just you know I'm a little frustrated by it because I'm like, ah, oh, this could have been so much better if you had made it for a different system. But it is, I'll, I'll go through books, both books really really um, quickly. But it's got great art. The presentation is awesome. If you're if you're firmly in fifth edition, but you want kind of a more, I would say melodramatic, <laughs> grounded world. So melodramatic in one sense, grounded in another. Melodramatic in the kinds of characters you're going to be dealing with, but grounded in the presentation of the world itself and in the sort of magic you're using and in the, um, and then this the tone. Um, it's a world of knaves, not heroes. Um, uh, a lot of the art is really excellent. It's The pages are all glossy, so it's going to be kind of reflecting a bit. But the art is really excellent in here. A lot of it's repeated between these two books. Um, but I, I, I mean, some of it is, is in color. Some of it's just not. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, but again, I think this is a great setting. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested in 5th edition, it, you're you know, worth checking out a couple of these books. Um, there again, it's just some fun ideas in here. You're basically playing a company of, not necessarily bandits, but it's it's kind of assumed you're going to be getting in trouble with the law. There are whole tables for and, and then charts for um, crimes and for your reward that you know for how much your the reward for you is and uh, how you can kind of lay low and what can happen to you there. There's rules for having a hideout and a den um, and the sort of things you can use to make your hideout a bit more uh, helpful to you. And then also risks that go along with having uh, the hideout, and bad things that can happen there. And there's rules for brawling, like getting into fist fights and, uh, you know, with like, stage props and <laughs> there's common props and epic props that you can use to fight. It's really, again, over the top trying to be ridiculous like it literally says you know in those old movies that you look from the 70s sometimes you'll see like the you'll see the uh, microphone like drift into the lens or you'll see someone you know like the scene will cut and someone will say something in a comment like play into that use that here in your descriptions and in your scenes make it very clear that there are like a few actors who are being reused over and over for the different roles and like <laughs> that stuff is kind of funny to me i don't know if everyone's gonna like that i could see that being a lot of fun for like a one or two shot maybe a short campaign but i don't know if i'd want to spend a lot of time in a world like that so i really like the the fact that you know i have this book it's cool 
and it's great art. And um, if you're going to run 5th edition, this is as good a setting as better a setting than a lot of others that are out there for you. Yeah, what spaghetti fantasy is. Um, but just keep in mind that you're, you're definitely, if you get this, you're, you're leaning into the 5th edition game again. Because it really is, uh, all of it's built around that system. With limitations added in, so you know, you're going to have to make sure this is, this is kind of very, this is a, a, a specific um, appeal. Yeah, this is a specific appeal. Now, this is not going to appeal to the, I think I would say, the average 5th edition audience, nor is it going to appeal to the old school gamer, because it's 5th edition. But it, it will have a very specific appeal, I think, and it would have a very short-term appeal for a lot of people. So people who are going to play this long term, I think it's a very, you know, it's a very select group. But people who would have a lot of fun with this as a one shot or as a short campaign or something, I think that's a lot of people. Um, and there are other books coming out for it still. Um, the Empire Wax Back, I think, is going to be coming out next summer or something like that. It's the next book. I, I'm, <laughs> I pre-ordered it. Because I want the whole collection because I'm a mad collector. Not because I'm ever going to use this. And I have to say, when I before I got this, I was like, man, this would be great. I'm really looking forward to using this. And then it came and I was like, eh, I don't think I will. Glad that I have it. Glad that I've collected it. But I look at this 5th edition stat block these days and I go, eh. Especially if they're not kind of like the MCDM active interesting stat blocks. If they're just pretty much, you know, D&D &D 5e regular stat blocks. Well, that's a really cool creature. And I just kind of go, oh, okay. And I zoom past it. So, anyway, that's something to keep in mind. But I think it's a, it's a cool book, good construction, and uh, great art. And an interesting idea. Again, it's trying something new. And so, to that respect, in that, re in that, in that respect, I, I admire this. And I encourage it. Anything that, that tries something new is worthwhile, even if it doesn't work entirely. Because, you know, doing the same thing again and again is not really interesting either. So this is, this is cool. Now, this is a, a second book. It's got a bunch of separate adventures and locations. Uh, basically, like, the first one was the setting book with all the rules for uh, races and for classes and for the basic changes to the rules in the game. This one is, like, different locations and adventures that occur there. Uh, with some new classes and a few things added to this. This is, this, this is a supplemental book. This is the uh, Macronomicon. Yeah, the Macronomicon. Uh, Macaronicon, sorry, Macaronicon. <laughs> I like macaroni, get it? Uh, Macaronicon. So anyway, one of the things that can happen in this book, I think in one of the adventures, is you get transported into actual Italy in the Middle Ages. So if you did that, you'd have to really, <laughs> really change the tone of the campaign. But yeah, like, I think, like this guy just looks like he's in any other 5th edition book. But it is a great... It, it's, it's a great setting. And I literally like the maps of the cities. You get a whole bunch of them. Um, it's actually upside down. <laughs> but I can't really do it the other way. So anyway, you get the sense. This is the maps of the cities. And I really like that. They're, they're really cool and flavorful. That's one thing this book does really well is the uh, cartography, the maps, the art. These books are great in that regard. So do I really highly recommend these? No, not really. But I do think that if you are playing 5th edition and you're super into, um, well, if you're into 70s Italian movies, <laughs> as weird as that sounds, then I think you'd really like this. Um, or if that, if that just idea kind of appeals to you, then maybe check these out. But I don't think it's a must buy. All right, the last thing I wanted to cover is this. This is Flabbergasted, which is a comedic role-playing game. It is a... Something I just came across while I was getting mazes. It comes from the same company. Um, and it's essentially, the way it describes it is it's a role-playing game designed to create funny uh, early 20th century scenarios that mimic stories like Faulty Towers and P.G. Wodehouse stories. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, I'm, I'm in. Because I love Faulty Towers and I love P.G. Wodehouse. Um, Smith, Jeeves and Wooster, awesome. And so when I, saw, I was like, well, I gotta get this. Now, I, and I can't say that I have done any reading in this book at all beyond that. So I can't even really tell you about the mechanics of this game. I've looked through it, I flipped through it just to look at the art and to get a sense of the whole. And it's great, it's, it reminds me of like, oh, I don't know, um, 
some Disney cartoons, you know, like Atlantis or something like that, and The Lost Empire. Uh, that's kind of the style of art that you find throughout this whole thing. It's really absurd, but it seems great. I, I just, I can't talk about this more than just to say what I've said. It's a P.G. Wodehouse Faulty Towers RPG where the uh, art style is in early Disney, or I shouldn't say early Disney, late animated Disney uh, before they got into the 3D animation, right before it was, when it was still uh, hand animated. So, Emperor's New Groove and... Uh, Atlantis and uh, those last few things. At least those are the last ones that I really remember watching as a kid. And if that appeals to you, then you should at least check this book out. I know there will be better reviews on it. And if you're interested in seeing more of a review, I can do one when I actually read through it. But it seems great. And again, it's another one of those things where as a collector, I'm glad that I have it. <laughs> do I think I'm ever going to run this? Hmm. It's a good question. A little corgis here. I don't know. I hope so. I hope I do. It's got a nice uh, yellow ribbon bookmark. I hope I run this, but it's one of those things where I could easily just read through it and go, eh, never mind, because of the mechanics or because of how it works or something like that. But I haven't read through it to that detail, so I can't tell you. Ooh, a little kilt here. But it does seem like, from the pictures, it seems like there's going to be some little... Again, if the pictures are any... Uh, estimate of the kinds of adventures you're going to be getting into. There are a few of them that I've seen so far. And uh, and I hope that would be the case because art, you know, hopefully should supplement the, the rest of it rather than just kind of be on its own. And it does seem like it will be typically Faulty Towers, PG Boathouse, uh, you know, problems, things that you're getting into. Uh, uh oh, we're, we're supposed to win the, the, the boat race. We have a giant bet against these other people and our, our boat sprung a leak and we're stuck on an island with a giant swan that's going to attack us if we go near anything. You know, that sort of story. Um, not a giant swan, but just an angry swan. So, again, if that sounds interesting to you, then you might want to check this out. Because I had never heard of it before I was randomly on their website getting mazes. And I was like, whoa, what is that? So maybe it's brand new, I don't know. But I do, uh, or maybe it's terrible and that's why no one's talking about it or something like that. Or maybe again, it's hyper specific because maybe not everybody's into PG Wodos and Faulty Towers. If they're not, they should be because they're great. Bunch of great art here at the end. And that's one thing that I think I just find this book delightful to read. The colors are awesome. The art is great. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, the classes are really interesting too. You have the, uh, the, uh, the Bohemian, the uh, aristocrat, the, the staff, the well-to-do, which is great, right? Typically, PG Boathouse. The staff, you get Jeeves, who's going to be very effective at certain things and very not effective at others. So Flabbergasted, a comedic role-playing game, I think is worth checking out if, if these things that I've just said appeal to you. With all these people hanging from a balloon, hot air balloon up here. You can't really see it. But. All right, so that was my Christmas haul. Got all this stuff over Christmas. Either um, bought it myself or was sent it. So um, was gifted it. Really, really appeals to me most of this stuff. And I'm, again, happy that I have all of it. I hope it's been interesting to you. And I'll see you guys in another video.